Hey everyone, Sarian here. Welcome back to Valhalla. It's been quite a few months since I recorded this series, or any series really. So, let's uh, get back into it. Last time at the bar, we listened in on Say and Stella telling us about how they met and the relationship. We also caught up with the woman who I'm pretty sure jumped off a roof at the beginning of our story, Kim. She's much happier now that she's not employed at that uh, augmented eye with that jerk editor. And after that, we called it a day. So, let's continue. I don't know if I read these yet. Okay, well, I think we can just go to work. Friday, December 23rd. Good evening. Uh, hey. How are you feeling? Lilum are soft and warm. Oh, yeah. We had Dorothy cuddle us the whole night, huh? Come again? You heard me. So, on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm. A sad pile of shit. <laughs> I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell, but... How to put it, the noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Uh, sorta, kinda. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you, and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second, saying that she had the whole night to go, and she couldn't just leave for free. I asked her how much, and she said, Enough to pay for this soda I'm having is fine. Huh. How did you get her number? I have contacts. Right. Anyways, Jill, if you need a second break, a drink or a hug, just let me know you here. Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs for me are the last thing you want. <laughs> If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. Alright, let's set up our jukebox. It's been so long. Time to mix drinks and change lives. <clears throat> it's nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? Welcome to Va... Oh, it's you guys. Hey, be very respectful. I brought my boss here. <laughs> I'd like to see you have an eye patch. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Uh, boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. So, what brings you here today? I wanted to see the place my best soldier is working at. Soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Huh? Oh, it's you, Dana. Soldier, why didn't you tell me you're working for Dana? No, that's not Dana, that's just Jay. Hmm. So I'm guessing you're part of this whole Sira thing. Part of it? I founded it. Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. Here we can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on Earth. And do you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those Safar bitches? Of course not. I'd include other animals, but sadly I can only take care of those who are the same species as I. The sad thing is, I take him more seriously, but it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Manly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? Alright. A manly drink for the dog. Is this legal? This should knock a dog out, shouldn't it? 
I'll give him a suplex. Here. Yes, this is just what I wanted. Uh, this tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know? You picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks. Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Sierra afloat will not go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean, we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though. Like the fact we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool! Every dog has the right to have his own ball. If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait, don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all her money like water. I mean, with what with the bar closing and all that. But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper? A box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course they are. How do you think they ship boxes? It's tied to gather? Tied to gather? Don't be silly. Unless she's paying him straight from her pocket. Boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sorts of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors. Boxes come in boxes. Bottles come in bottles. Oh, as expected from you, boss. Wait, that theory only works assume, assuming she's actually paying him with money. He's getting treats. For all I know, she might be paying him with steaks. So tomorrow, you're gonna check for people selling boxes, you hear? Uh, sir, yes, sir. Except that to boss, a good steak is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with foil? Russen Strauss had to be taken to the vet because he ate a foil a piece of cheese came in. Versus, you're right, we need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with the vet those safe our bastards have. She's always so nice with us. I know, her smile is so cute too. So it's better that we vet for a vet? Yes, put that on the list. Ah, Nacho. Oh yeah, I forgot she knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by. I've got some errands to run. Great, Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. All right, Greenhorn, let's get going. <laughs> oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? Gil looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's the kind to just not accept such a thing. But with Nacho, he'd had something to do, and he'd be far from the... be away from the bar for a bit. When he put it that way... Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Airbus sure is nice. Glad I'm working with her too. Yeah. <laughs> You're not even working. So, you having anything? Actually, I'm just gonna go sit over there and be on span standby. Await orders. Okay. Shit, I missed the chance to ask how or even if or if he even gets paid with money. Man, I sure need to get wasted. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel better. Sheba! For fuck's sake, you piece of scrap. We just got out of a building full of dogs. But this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. Uh. Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Jill. Get me a beer, will you? Gotcha. Does Dilla want anything? 
Okay. Roll. Sir, yes, sir. So cute. He's fine. Just a beer, then. Friday after work isn't just the beer, though. It's the beer. Okay, the beer. Coming right up. I haven't seen these two in a while. Here you go. And thus this Friday becomes better already. Hey Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with him. I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. Uh, no thanks. The last thing I need right now is more crap taking space. So, how are things up at Dogtown? Well, that Laura girl is stirring things up for better or for worse. For worse? She's, um, like a rabbit. An overtly politically correct rabbit. R rabbit? I never had a pet rabbit. They're a nervous mess that gets startled over the littlest of things. And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together and holy shit. Poor girl can't speak properly. She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say anything offensive. She's a nice girl, and it's sweet that she tries so hard to not offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't help either. Hmm? You randomly yell, What did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. What? What is wrong with you? Yeah, well... It's just that she looks so cute when she's startled. Like a rabbit. It raises up the question of whether she's really like that. Or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How? Oh. You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. Uh... It's not like you can say no, you know? I mean, it's my honor that it's on the line that's on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you're right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her. Huh. You take it in your stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. How is that any good? She's cute and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Shit, you're right. You must save my teasing for when the moment is just right then. No, that's not the problem. It is for me. And what are you doing here? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. By the way, he said his name was... Say, this Laura girl, do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. Do I even know the dog's name? <laughs> Sorry, focusing on the wrong he thing here. But what kind of girl is she? Aside from the whole politi politically correct rabbit thing. Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really... Really slowly. Really, really slowly. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff, she does a great job, but it's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building, though. She's more like a freelancer. Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. <sighs> okay, bad example. May I say something? By all means. If that Laura girl is really as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um... A more assertive person? Lilum, uh, 
a more assertive partner? Yeah, piece of scrap. She's totally calling you a pussy. <laughs> She's right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then you'd be underestimating the power of love. Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people for the better or for worse. Who knows, maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. I guess that's a possibility too. Still, why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? Because she's like a cute rabbit, so someone might try to eat her out there. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So, in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. <sighs> Why not see if she likes you and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? You make me sound like some kind of skirt chaser. She's not into girls. How do you find out? I asked her directly. Oh, of course you did. She seemed, um, giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. Oh, God. It was weird. Okay, enough, Nolora, for a night. That... Refrain from using any that's-what-you-said-last-night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink, then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. <laughs> Get me a fringe weaver. All right. I feel like she's traumatizing this poor girl. I don't think they know how to a act with other people. Aged on the rock. Mix. Okay. Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. It seems it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like they're customers too. Set attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. It seems that company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender literally made them drink, drink all the bloom. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? And not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of a relationship, Jill? Uh, in more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for the better or for worse? I guess for the better. I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although, thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So, you're one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became more, uh... What's the word? Psychopathic? Cynical, jaded, bitter, tired of the crap this world and everyone in it throws it on a daily basis. Hey, I'm just quoting you. <sighs> but yeah, I think I became all that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. How was that bad? We'd all go and protest. We'd start all kinds of movements to see things changed. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone was willing to go that far. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. Championing. So I moved from group to group, only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were of the dangerous extremist kind. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all that. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather other people. Um, you seriously never thought about it that way? Uh, 
You need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever. Where's the other guy, by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Oh, yeah. The one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works at the Safar Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something. Oh, she's a nice lady. Why didn't he do it then? I don't know. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? The pay from the dogs isn't enough to keep up with the mounting debts. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. But this is coming from someone working in a place that pays a dog doing fuck all. Or at least I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well, we're fine, but we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I me really mean her. She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand to hear another had to go to a picnic with a hangover story. Fine. Let's go then. See ya, Jill. Bye. Please come again. Man, you're such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'll take my break. Call me if someone comes. Alright. Phew. I think Jill might be taking some time to process everything and... I don't know. Maybe she's put it behind her at least a little bit. Well, at least we're distracted with the customers. No dogs in sight. Don't speak too soon. I wish there was a... Like a randomizer for this. That would be cool. Okay then, back to work. Welcome to Val- Oh. Hey there, Alma. <sighs> hmm. Um. <sighs> she seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer up. Hmm. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes... Maybe something bubbly? Okay, classy. I don't know. Hey. Huh? And this? It's on me. Drink, so you at least change your expression. Why not just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? Heh. <laughs> so, how is it? Well, it has alcohol, and I'm in a bar, so... Uh, good enough, I guess. I got you to speak. That's all I wanted. <clears throat> what? They were gonna jinx me or something? No, but you being down and silent is uncanny. <clears throat> You're making it sound like I'm some sort of windbag. You know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Thanks. So, why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly. My grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> so, what is it? Was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, that's old news. 
I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. So, go ahead, unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so, remember my sister Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh... However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So... What does this fully capable woman do a couple of weeks later? I bring her abusive husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spends a couple of days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot steamy nights and then left. I... Uh, I... well... Huh. He reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there. Oh no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days, she's left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give them some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all the built-up tension, I just... exploded. First, I started ranting about how our kids are growing up seeing some messed up stuff. I start scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's in no place to have all those es escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Yeah, you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting the guy that hit, um, hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Ava and Bernardo, and they've turned out pretty damn well. I don't have kids, but I'm not a cheap whore. Gah! Damn. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I love my family and I put them above all else. But Diana's seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Anyway, I could help. You just did. Uh? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. <sighs> I'm still angry as hell though and I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get all of this off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. <laughs> now, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? <laughs> what the hell? Why would you ask that? The worst offender is my dad, actually. Kidding, kidding. <laughs> Oh, man. I wish you weren't. I wish you weren't. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Ava. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. This can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my mother's side of the family. My father's sisters still look quite young, but when the menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I guess. 
There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had problems with that. Oh, I see. Hmm. Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Diana situation? How your nephews are turning out. If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her, somehow. Actually, what worries me is, what if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man and I settle down, what if he turns out shitty? If he's shitty, he wouldn't be a good man in the first place. What if I have a sudden burst where I, I want to live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey! Am I lying? No, but there are things best kept as unspoken truths. <sighs> I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? <sighs> get me something with ice, but alcoholic, please. Alright? Hmm. Let's try the bloom light. Here you go. Thanks, I needed to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So, you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? Uh, don't think too much about it. Oh, come on. You heard my problems. I want to help you, too. Don't worry too much. Right, I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure, something tells me this mega Christmas is going to be a mess at my parents' home. So I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Hmm, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hmm. Say, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? I guess I like legs the most. Really? I like breasts better. Breasts is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have a better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs, and a lot less messy. <laughs> you silly girls. Boss? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best part are the wings. Boss, what? what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where did you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken, the shop two blocks from here. <laughs> Sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? <laughs> Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because... Huh? Not as much. Yo, Armitage. Alma. I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might have to heat it up, but it'd be cooked otherwise. Great, I expect you here. It's Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. <sighs> she left the bucket. Don't mind if I do. Want some? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. Weird. Maybe she got a mixed up order and that's why she left them here. She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Uh. Say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? 
That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, responsible, responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never late either. What about you? I like them well-dressed. If they go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. Some muscles always fine too, but shallowly dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my men. My potential husband, on the other hand, another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. What do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Hmm, spicy. Usually something sweet helps, right? <laughs> Imagine giving her a spicy drink. I forgot there was even spicy drinks. Maybe something sour. I think sour counteracts spicy well as well. This might help. Oh. Phew. Yep, it did. Thanks. Alright, so, next question. What kind of girl do you like? Mm hmm. I you first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but. Nope, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit, just calm down. I, I, I guess I, I like girls with light colored hair. <laughs> light colored hair? Oh my god. It was obvious. It, yeah, you know, like r redheads and such. What about white? Like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just that when she got here with a butter bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. <laughs> it was a boss for the wings. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. <laughs> hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. <sighs> so, light colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Uh, yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too and I start hitting on you. Would you let- would you go along with it? A nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment? I will never let you go. <laughs> okay then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you're feeling shitty these last days? What? Oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill, you've heard my problems so many times. Now I want to help you. <sighs> come on, come here. Huh? I told you to sit here, come on. Uh, what? What are you? <laughs> Holy shit. Alright then, now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay, then I move this... <laughs> Click here and... Now it works for you, for me, and that dog in a Hawaiian shirt. Why with him, too? He's a dog in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right, and how did he even manage to... Oh yeah, hacker, right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty. Mind telling me why? It's... A long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. <sighs> okay then, it's something that goes back to my college years. Oh, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education. 
I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to get always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelids just studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave me more credits. I really liked her, and after some time, I found out she liked me too. Oh, we started going out. I met all of her family, even, and... You want a drink? What? Uh, a drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. <sighs> a sugar rush, then. You can't mess that up. Right. <laughs> this is very creative. I like this. Sugar rush. Here. Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. <laughs> I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender with m than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know? People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. How much of a problem can it be? So, keep telling the story. <sighs> well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session. Investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a half, a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that, so I was just standing there, and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I had only gone through the motions, day after day, from high school to graduating. I... I felt like years, whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point I stopped and realized I'd need a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all my strength to not start running like a panicked mess. <sighs> So, a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenora was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things developed pretty quickly. She said one too many things and I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Huh? 
The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to this bar. Uh, apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nano machine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it, wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? I don't know, I just feel like all kinds of failure. <sighs> Chill. And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yes, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but... She's just a kid, for fuck's sake. She lost a sister who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride? Fear? A stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize her to her forever. Truly forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. I honestly don't know what to say. I didn't expect the story to be this. I... <sighs> Yo, boob tender. Y yes? Can you get me a big beer here? You're coming right up. That big beer. for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Gia drinks lots of beer. One of the perks of the BTC issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Ooh. Mm. Hey Jill, what kind of girl was Lenore? Huh? Well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now. Shut up, I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't, it's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All of that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenora would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. <sighs> Man, I'm gonna miss her. And now... You know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking what the hell to do with my life, I remembered a night we spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember saying that, her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh, interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Th thank me? I, I guess I just needed someone to tell all of this to. And you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there, listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, but I'm not 
one to spout love and fluffiness, but I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client, but I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least, your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Jill, are you dying? Shut up, I'm trying to have a heart to heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just... It's weird for you to get so... sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know. I never, I'm, I mean never, want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any cost, and if it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. Hate it. Hate it. <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. Alright, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know. You're drinking on the job. Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I, I mean it, you know. Thanks for everything today. Silly Jill. You listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That Alma girl sure is nice. Ah, uh, boss, did, did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did. You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss, uh, about those chicken wings. Fucking idiots of the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana, we don't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat their regulars? Boss? <laughs> I guess it's mine now. Cherish titty hacker. She's a good friend. What? I didn't get a flaws service bonus. What happened? <sighs> oh, well. Phew. Your account was charged $8,000. God damn. <laughs> Jill is really broke now. Okay. Well, at least our power didn't get cut. That's always a plus. Bill paid. Didn't you have a boyfriend named Bill? <laughs> Okay, well, uh, since it's to the end of the, of the day, I think we're going to end things here. They look very cute together. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Grand Slam Fighters. Anyone into wrestling? Huge fan of GSF recently. Uh, I like the match quality. I wish they gave more importance to the mid card. Blah, 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 blah. Update on the Lithum. It looks like we were able to record and transcribe one of the messages from the one of the compromised signals. Joe ran the anchor from our popular TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. Who are you? Are you really alive? You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. What?
that's so fucking creepy. I wonder if that has anything to do with that Alice Rabbit person. What does that message even mean? Are they trying to create some kind of hive mind? Either way, it's an unnerving. Well, I guess it's time for bed. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to take care of yourself today, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.